I love traveling, running, shopping. And I love anything and everything about ice cream. My name is Dr. Maya Warren. I'm an ice cream scientist. An ice cream scientist is someone who studies the microstructure, the physical properties, the makeup of ice cream. Ice cream is one of the most complex foods. It has three different phases. It's a liquid, it's a solid, and it's a gas. All in one. It has to stay in those phases in order for us to enjoy it the way that we do. What I love most about ice cream is that anyone can make it. But as a food scientist, it's not just about creating that, that perfect bite one time. It's chemistry that allows us to create that product that can last, that's consistent. For any pint you've ever opened or any, any ice cream you've ever eaten, there's a scientist, there's a chemist at a lab bench figuring out that perfect mouthfeel. At any given time in my freezer, you could find like 20 to 30 different flavors and pints of ice cream. Not all ice creams are actually created equal. There are times when I'm like, I don't even know what I just ate. It's so icy, or it doesn't have body at all, or it's almost like overstabilized and it's slimy, it's slick in the mouth. But then there are times when I have the most beautiful ice cream. As consumers of ice cream, we focus a lot on the flavor, but there's also the, the texture that's really critical. So those attributes of ice cream and that texture really make ice cream what it is. And the beauty of it is that it's all rooted in chemistry itself. As a food scientist, or even an ice cream scientist for that matter, one of the main problems that we try to solve is ingredients that don't always want to come together. They don't always, they're not always happy together, and so how do we make them come together? A common example of uh, emulsion is your typical salad dressing, like a vinegar and oil salad dressing that you might have, and you might see that when you put vinegar and then you put some oil, and you see they completely are separated, they're not combining, and if you shake it, you put it back on the counter, they're still gonna separate. But we have ingredients like egg yolks, which can act as emulsifiers. So the beauty of something like egg yolk is that it has hydrophobic and hydrophilic properties. So that hydrophobic aspect wants to be close to the fat part, and the hydrophilic wants to be close to the water part, and so it actually acts as a bridge or a binder between those two elements that create that stable emulsion. So that when you combine the vinegar and the oil and you put an egg yolk inside, you can shake it, and now it actually can combine into a homogeneous substance that can become your salad dressing. Ice cream mix is actually an emulsion too. In order to make a basic ice cream, you'll take all of your ingredients, you'll mix them, you'll heat them, make sure everything's dissolved. The key ingredients to making ice cream is of course starting with your cream. So you have your milk fat, which comes in via, via your cream, and then you'll have your sweetener, um, in the form of, typically in the form of sugar, and then you might have stabilizers and or emulsifiers to help really combine that liquid mix together. You'll cool it in the refrigerator, then you'll take that mix and put it in your ice cream machine and churn. So an ice cream mix, you've got an oil and water emulsion, so you have milk fat, the oil, kind of floating around in the water, and those could do a few different things. Fat globules could either kind of stay as they are, kind of just happy floating around. They could fully coalesce, meaning that you have fat globules that then combine into one a larger fat globule or the fat globules can partially come together, which is what we call partial coalescence. And that partial coalescence is the secret to beautiful, delicious, creamy ice cream. In order to achieve partial coalescence, you need ice crystals to form, as well as the fat globules that have crystalline fat on the inside due to the temperature of that substance. 
You also need friction in order to bring the fat globules together. And they come together, but they're hindered by a crystalline fat network. And so the fat globules are not able to fully coalesce, but they partially come together. And of course, you need the emulsifier in your mix. Emulsifiers play two roles in ice cream. One, they help suspend the fat in the water. And in the churning process, they play another role. Without emulsifiers, it's actually quite difficult for the fat globules to be able to come together and partially coalesce. But once you add those emulsifiers to the ice cream mix and you're doing the churning process, the fat globules are actually able to come together and partially coalesce so much easier. And all of that is happening inside of your ice cream maker to create that partially coalesced fat. If I could basically kind of look under the microscope, at its molecular level, I would be looking for um, air cells that are sort of surrounded by partially coalesced fat. So you have little little chains of partially coalesced fat that surrounds the air cells, and you've got, you know, ice crystals that are sort of all kind of within that in that structure. And you have uh, what we would call almost a little bit of free water. That's that that's that liquid phase. And so if I were to be able to kind of peek into ice cream, that's exactly what I would be looking for. Chemistry has opened up the possibilities and opportunities in, in my life in ways I would have never even imagined. Being able to have something like ice cream and being able to relate that to my first love, which is chemistry, has been able to allow me to see life in a completely different way. I didn't realize that so much chemistry was in every single thing that's around me every day, from the food that I eat, to the clothes that I wear, to the music that I listen to. There's nothing like freshly made ice cream. It is beautiful.